Welcome to the Smart Tech Check Podcast, hosted by Mark Vina, your home for candid, insightful, and provocative conversations about the smart home, home automation, security, smartphones, PC and console gaming, and much more. Hi, my name is Mark Vina, host of the Smart Tech Check Podcast. Today is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. With all the talk over the past few years about the smart home and the usual focus on Apple, Google, and Amazon, it's easy to miss that there were companies and groups paving the way for what we call today the smart home. One of these groups is the Z-Wave Alliance, which has been around for two, two decades. Joining me for today's podcast is Mitch Klein. Let me bring him up on the screen. There is Mitch. Hello, Mark. Mitch, how are you? I'm great, thank you, and very, very thankful to be here. Well, I, we, I really um, I'm excited to have you on the podcast today. Mitch is the director of the Alliance's Strategy Group uh, with Z-Wave, and uh, he's here to talk about a little bit about how the um, uh, smart, home, smart Home has evolved, the evolution of uh, Z-Wave, and as well as its future. So, Mitch, we're really excited to have you on board. How are you um, again? So glad to be here, actually. I mean, Smart Home is finally hitting its stride after all these years. Yes, you know, I was thinking about this before the podcast because I knew I was going to be doing this for you today. And I, you know, I was going to evoke the phrase when, when a consumer kind of decides, makes that big plunge and they're going to do the smart, they're going to outfit their home with all kinds of small, uh, cool smart home gadgets. You know, the first thing I think of, you know, it's kind of like high, you know, high risk, high reward, but it's, it's not risking that you're going to, the, the risk is, is confusion, if anything, or it takes you a lot longer to do something that you thought was as simple as that commercial that you saw on a Facebook ad. And obviously, it's a lot, um, you know, it's, 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 it's been fairly complex, but it's getting much more simple. And, you know, that, that's what Z-Way really is all about in many ways and delivering a lot of value that you need for certain types of devices. But before we go into that, what I want to do is I like to talk about people's backgrounds before we get into the... Um, uh, podcasts and stuff and some of the questions I want to kind of uh, throw at you. So let's talk about, you know, what you've done. I mean, uh, obviously you've been in the space for a long time, but I'll let you give the audience an overview of what you do and uh, the, uh, the, um, some of the things you've done over the last uh, 25 years or so. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Uh, actually, it's really hard to believe that I've <laughs> been doing this for almost 30 years. I look back. Oh, wow. I mean, this is yes. way before smart and home were ever put in the same sentence. You know, I think mm -hmm. uh, one of the early terms was home automation, which, which was a terrifying concept to people. Not that smart home may not be terrifying either, but, um, <laughs> you know, I think we've come to the point where, where it's quite acceptable to most. Um, so, I mean, I've done everything from retail, where I would manage a chain of stores for an old company called Tweeter, et cetera. Um, oh, wow. Also now, now you're, dating, now you're <laughs> dating yourself. My God, Tweeter, et cetera. Oh, my. Wow. It's going back a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I actually owned and operated my own installation company for 15 years, a company out of Boston called Media Systems. And I yes. think that was really uh, probably the best experience in terms of uh, where we are today. Because at that time, you know, we had to take a little bread box and breadboard, I mean, and, you know, solder in relays and things mm -hmm. to make projectors drop and, you know, screens open and close and lights change. And so we kind of right. had to make things happen on our own. Uh, that was pretty complicated back then. Now it's, a, mm. now it's a whole lot easier. So I've been in product development. And of course, now as executive director of Z-Wave Alliance, I'm loving where we are now with, with the smart home. Great stuff. Uh, is, has any, you know, before we get into the, my first topic, mm -hmm. um, is there anything that really strikes you today, um, given the, the work, the, you, the involvement you've been with the Alliance and the work you've done? You know, because, uh, you know, and I, I'll say this very, very candidly. I mean, you know, Z-Wave has really always been about the smart home before it was called a smart home. Right. I mean, it wasn't called, you know, a lot of smart marketing people came along and said, hey, we'll call it a smart home, and it became a thing. Right. But you folks were involved in this way, way before, years before that that phrase got coined. So any perspective on that when you come yeah. back? Actually, that's actually true. Uh, Z-Wave has been around for 20 years it actually started uh, up by a group in Denmark, put mm -hmm. it together, and there's a company called Zensys for uh, Zen Systems, hence the Z-Wave. That, that's how that name came about, by the way. Uh, was purchased by a company in the U.S. named Sigma Designs, and in 2018, uh, Silicon Labs purchased Z-Wave. So we've been 100% focused 
on the smart home since day one. So mm -hmm. you look at other platforms, whether it be Wi-Fi or Zigbee or other, you know, good, good platforms. They they're like all things to all people. They're doing lots of different uh, platforms. Uh, with Z-Wave, it's always been about about the smart home. And right. what's really cool about it is if you happen to have been one of the lucky ones and 20 years ago you bought, let's say, a dimmer or, an, or a switch, uh, you know what? That'll still work with the latest and greatest Z-Wave systems today. So backwards mm -hmm. compatibility was something that we drove from day one to make sure that no products ever go dark and people can actually build, you know, systems in their home for themselves. So right. that's one of them. I think I, I should also touch on a couple of other aspects as well, which has made mm -hmm. Z-Wave so successful. Um, one of them is what we call interoperability. And what that means is any company that wants to develop a product with Z-Wave has to, has to get their product certified. There's certain requirements in terms of the, the software uh, development, and it must become certified, which means that an independent third-party test house confirms the fact that this Z-Wave device should carry the logo and will work with any other Z-Wave devices. Right. So you're not locked into a brand. Of course, you're welcome to, but you can, you know, say lighting, for example. You're using one brand off for of lighting, say it's a Jasco or, or a, another company. Uh, if you have a situation where you may need a, a solution to a use case that Jasco doesn't make, you can then pick up any other Z-Wave device that will then work with that as well. So I think that's an important piece of what uh, Z-Wave is. Yeah, well, let's 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 go into some of this uh, great information here. And yeah. um, this probably doesn't surprise you, but it's I think it's a really good instructive slide and in kind of characterizing what the small home environment is like. The top ten uh, devices you commonly find from a security system standpoint, a home connected system. I, and again, we're not going to go through every one of these items in detail, but right. uh, it, it does kind of create, though, the, the perception, not the perception, but it kind of sets the stage for these are the most common devices that most people gravitate toward, or these are the functions that people want to solve, generally speaking. I mean, the smart home is obviously becoming complex. Um, there are people who use smart home technology to control all kinds of you know, odd and non-traditional activities in their home, but these are the baseline activities. Do you have any perspective on this list? And does any of this surprise you? Yeah, actually, just let me give you a little background to this first, um, that uh, we as the Z-Wave Alliance, well, we commissioned a private study. You know, we've done this mm -hmm. now. This is the third one. And this is essentially, it's been for our members to kind of see where, yeah. you know, where the action is, what people are buying, what their tastes are, things like that. But it's also very, very helpful information uh, for those that are not even involved with Z-Wave. So just backing up a moment, um, the mass adoption of smart home really began and got its roots in home security. And that's mm. kind of one of the key points for Z-Wave as well, is that it's locked down, never been, never been hacked outside of a lab. Yes, I will ask you to test that. Outside of a lab, it's never been hacked. So what we're saying, what we're doing here is saying, okay, people who've already had a security system or some other type of home control, what are the kinds of devices that you want to add? What, what, do, you, what do you see as a device that's important to you? Uh, those who have security systems, again, you can see the list here. Number one, cameras. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, but also number one from control systems is having that uh, the smart video doorbell. You know, Ring got that started. There are lots of brands now that are offering versions of that doorbell camera. So when I look at a list like this, I go, yeah, yeah, of course. These things, these things all make sense. And we've gone beyond the burglar arm where we're just protecting the, the exterior of the home, you know, and uh, by adding in these cameras and now you're tying in lighting and you're tying in water detection, things like that. So, um, yeah, I found this list. Uh, validates what we already believed. Well, I, you know what's interesting, Mitch, is that you know let you use the example of of cameras. You know, it's so important that the protocol itself is really bulletproof from a security standpoint, because because yeah. sometimes the device itself, you know, may have security problems, and the fact that the protocol has that capability, it's an added level of protection. I mean, how many times yeah. have we read about people buying? Oh, I bought a nanny cam 
you know, at some electronic store and, you know, I found out that the password is password and everybody's hacking it. And, and then, by the way, there are, there are websites like that that do nothing right. but list um, uh, uh, devices that have been hacked. So that's so right. important, the fact that the protocol itself has security built into its algorithm, you know. Mm-hmm. Let us go to the next slide here that I wanted to bring up. And, and these are, you know, again, I want you to comment on this itself, but yes. this is the top five Z-Wave devices according to the, to, the, to the study. And again, none of this surprises me. I I'm, assume it doesn't surprise you, but any comment from your perspective? Actually, I have to say, yeah, that to me, there was a pleasant surprise in this. And if you look at the number one item on the list, smart water valves. Yes. You know, this is something that we've been championing for many years, saying, you know, water damage in the home is actually the single biggest payout from insurance companies. And it, and can, be anyone... catastrophic, and it can be catastrophic if you get, yes. if your water here breaks. Yes. Yeah, it's insidious. I mean, you know, there's a water leak, it's going to get everywhere and it can destroy any number of uh, our aspects to the home. And so being able to put water sensors, say, um, behind a washing machine where a hose might at some point break. Or behind a toilet, or anything that may that that brings water into the house, enables the system to say, "Ah, there's water running, and it shouldn't be," and then can send a message to the smart water valve that turns off the main uh, feed of water into the home, and then sends a notification to the homeowner, going, "You know, ah, there's a problem here, and don't worry, we've turned the water off." So, right, you know, I know how important it is, but to see it in the top uh, the top five. Actually, two of the top five, to me, what was a pleasant surprise. But I should also point out that, you know, number six was probably tiny percentage points, you know, behind it. So uh, there's actually a whole top 10 and top 20. But yeah, yeah, water, water protection. If any of your listeners here don't have water protection in the home, now is a good time to take care. Oh, of it. Right, especially during the winter when, you know, uh, you know, winter burst pipes and mm-hmm. they, they uh, I'm, again, I won't go into the whole long litany of rest that people run. I think part of it is yeah. that in the smart home, you know, water detection, as silly as it, it seems, it's not a sexy capability to automate. You know, people want to listen to music. They want to, they want to do other things in their home. But the, the, the reality is, is that, you know, you're not going to end up paying $40,000 in damage in your basement right. if your if your um, smart speaker stops working. But you right. will pay that kind of dollars if you do have water damage. So I agree with you. This yeah. is one of those capabilities. Yeah, it's not one of those things where you want to bring your neighbor over and say, hey, look what I got. I got water sensors. You know, <laughs> I got leak detectors. Yeah. That's that's. That's true. But, and here's the awesome thing about it. I mean, and, and I we p- purposely made this an eye chart because it just shows you the breadth of the, of, of the spectrum of, of, of Alliance members. And I mean, it's really a who's who, you know, and we, and we were talking about that when I, when we uh, were having a, a short discussion at uh, CES a few weeks ago. It really is amazing. I mean, th- you know, everybody talks about matter, and, we'll, we'll, and we have to talk about that in, in a second. Mm-hmm. And those are imp- and that that initiative obviously is important. But you know, this really is kind of a reflection of really the work that Z-Wave has been doing for twenty years, and the and the gravity of the importance of the alliance itself. Yeah, and the depth of uh, devices and device companies that are providing products, goods mm-hmm. and services. Yeah, I mean it. It's an eye chart, but what's kind of fun is that we we have a version of this chart at any of the trade shows that we do. And mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of funny. I, at first, when I came on board with the Alliance seven years ago, I thought, you know, that's not good use of the space. But actually, people do stand in front of that thing and they stare oh, yeah? at, the, at the logos. And yeah, it's definitely a who's who in, in the technology right. on that list. Oh, it, it really, it really, it really yeah. is. So again, I mean, it, it, it's just hard to fathom a, a, a company that comes to the market with a device that does not have Z-Wave um, support. So that is um, uh, pretty amazing. Yep. Uh, let's go to the next slide here, and that is, and uh, yeah, now let's okay. Let, let's from your perspective again. This is a bit of an eye chart, but it, it's 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 important information. And I do want to address the issue of matter uh, first and foremost because there's some folks that may think that Z-Wave and Matter are um, competitive each other, and, and that couldn't be further of the truth. You know, I mean, we were talking about this at CES. You guys want Matter to, to, to succeed, but let, let's go in and, and get your perspective um, of that kind of um, uh, the, the parallel nature of, of both um, capabilities. Yeah, yeah. Let me be very clear in that uh, we at the Z-Wave Alliance are very supportive 
of this new initiative. Well, it's not new anymore, but of the, of the latest <laughs> initiative, you know, which is now called Matter. Originally, it was called uh, uh, Chip or the Connected Home over IP. Um, this has the support. This Matter thing has the support of the big, the big guys. You know, Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, Samsung, Smart Things, uh, Comcast, and you know, hundreds of others. And what they've done is they said, hey, listen, interoperability is really important. We have to be able to ensure that a consumer can add whatever brand device they have or they want to add and mix and match, things like that. And we've been saying that for 20 years. Yeah. And it's great to see that these market movers themselves or disruptors, as they're called, have not only bought into that, but are actually helping to drive the success of it. Right. So we're totally supportive we think it's a great idea we love it it brings additional visibility and accessibility to smart home and smart devices way beyond where it's been and also would like to point out that you've got hundreds of millions of installations around globally with z-wave with zigbee with other platforms and for matter to be successful it has to be compatible with all of these existing millions and millions of systems out there. Right. And in fact, what this particular uh, slide is showing is that, yes, it will be, it must be, and it, it is accepted by all those involved in matter that this needs to be the case. So whether right. it's a bridge or there's some software method for this interoperability, what my advice would be, if you already have Z-Wave, keep going with it, keep building with it. And should you decide to add matter devices at some point, it will work. Uh, trust me on that one. It will work. We'll make sure of it. Now, that's a, that's a terrific uh, explanation, Mitch, because I think from my perspective, you know, looking at this category, you know, the, even though the smart home has been, and, and this is a macro comment, even though the category itself has been growing at a very, you know, feverish pitch, I think what's going to kick it into ultra um, popularity, you know, where, you know, the, 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 it, it's not just a hockey stick, but it goes straight up in terms yeah. of adoption is getting this matter initiative um, uh, integrated very quickly because, I mean, let's face it, you know, homes are so interesting in that, you know, in my, in my home, and I have 35 or 40 different mm -hmm. devices in my home of various flavors, you know, I have to think for a second before I invoke the magic watchword, and that drives me crazy, you know, um, especially when you're tired. You know, you, you just, you know, you, you're not fulfilling the potential of your, of your smart home um, layout. If you have that, you know, that level of, oh, I don't know whether this device works with that device. I got to uh, incorporate a watchword. So I, 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 for one, cannot wait for this. To me, this is going to be, you know, manna from heaven. <laughs> yeah, let me point out another uh, thing. Because um, we know consumers absolutely love to replace their cell phones every year, every two years. Some parts of the world, it's every six months. But there's no consumer that wants to go and replace their thermostat once they put it in, or they yes. don't want to replace the dimmers once they put or, it in. Or, or door sensors or, or window door sensors. Door locks, exactly right. No one wants no. to replace those things, which is exactly why I say that that uh, matter must be compatible, and it will be compatible with existing devices out there. So, again, just to reassure anyone that's, that's watching that if you already <laughs> have gear, you're good. Don't worry. It will continue to work. Well, and I think the point you made, which is a really good one, is that this should not, you know, whether Matter um, uh, get, delivers devices in two months or four months from now, that shouldn't change a person's decision about adopting other smart home solutions, especially if they're Z-Wave compliant. So, exactly. yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely all over that point. Let's hit the next point, and that is, and this is where I'm asking now to put all your, your, um, your magic uh, goggles into the future, and let's talk about, you know, beyond the smart home and how the, the, the technology you think maps that we've got smart cities coming aboard. Right. Um, uh, you know, retail is becoming smart. You know, um, Qualcomm's doing a lot of work in that area. But from your perspective, I want to kind of get your, you know, prognostication thoughts on where the category is going. So when we talk about smart home, typically referring to a freestanding house, something like that, right? Um, but in fact, with some of the latest developments on the Z-Wave side, which I guess we'll talk about in a moment, you know, we're really talking about putting the smarts in what we call MDUs or multiple dwelling units or apartment buildings, if you will. Condominiums, apartment buildings, hotels, places where there are 
large numbers of of rooms or you know individual capacity. So Z Wave is definitely appropriate, especially with the latest long range, where not only will it enable more rooms, more, it also enables more devices. You know, you can run up to four thousand devices on a new Z Wave platform. Um, I'd love to talk to the folks that are going to push it to those four thousand devices. So mm -hmm. we've got that. Another thing that you know has become very popular, or I should say, popular to discuss, is what I hate the term aging in place, people that just want to live in their home and not move as they get older, not move to a, a different facility or a senior living facility. They want to be able to stay in their home. And the challenge for that isn't about the, the, uh, that person specifically, it's about the caregivers. And the caregivers are typically the loved ones, the children, the grandchildren, the aunts, the uncles, things like that. They're the ones that have to change their life in order to enable you know, their family member to stay at home. But with better use of technology in the home, they're actually being able to monitor and communicate in ways that doesn't require caregivers to actually give up the freedom to live their own lives the way they want to live. This is a really big deal. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I'd say this is a huge, huge thing for the future. Well, and the other category, and I agree with you 100%, that to me is fascinating to me because it's not grow it's growing, but it's not growing at the clip it needs to grow at. Right. is smart appliances. Now, the reason for that is that people typically don't change their appliances. You don't change your refrigerator until the refrigerator absolutely conks out. Right. You know, you get, unlike a smartphone where people, right. oh, hey, I need the latest and greatest Apple iPhone or whatever. Uh, but, you know, appliances typically have life cycles of 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. What do you think it's going to take? And I know that's kind of an off the tough question for the smart appliance category to really accelerate. Yeah, any, any thoughts on that? Well, I think, you know, when it comes to actually any technology, it's all about the use case. Is there a compelling mm -hmm. use case, right? Yes. It's not about the technology for the technology's sake, right? iPod came out, people said, who the heck needs an iPod, right? But it had a killer use case, right? Take all the music with you. And I think that's the same with appliances in terms of their, you know, is there a killer UK use case for a smart microwave? Yes. Right? And the answer can be yes if, say, using QR codes and being able to tie that into a massive database that, you know, scan the QR code of a, something you want to microwave, a, a meal or a vegetable or something, you know, put it in and the microwave is smart enough to know precisely how to make it ready for consuming. You know, right. there are things like that. There are things like that with the oven, talk about a smart oven, whereby even in the simplest use case, making sure you turned it off. How often right. have you been in the car and I, I speak from personal experience, and my wife says to me, oh, did I turn off the stove? Yes. Uh, is the range on, right? Right. You know, something as simple as being able to say, yep, we got it, or to preheat the oven on the way home, you know, from work. So, you know, it depends no, I, on no, the you, individual, but you, yes. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. You say this is a big deal. I, I you know, I, um, we've got to uh, move on, but the uh, what I think is really going to drive this category is given the fact that electricity use um, uh, cost is, is going up ex almost exponentially across yeah. the country. I mean, you don't know, you don't want to know what my monthly electric bill in California <laughs> is. It's, it's, it's so out of control Crazy. is that uh, as these devices right. become smarter, like dishwashers and washing machines that could intelligently know, don't run the rinse, don't want until the electric rates are at its lowest rates. That's a selling feature that I think people could um, could wrap their heads around because it saves money. And, and, and more and more device, devices like that in that category are doing that. Look, the look ahead. Now, this is more of kind of a view within the home. You mm -hmm. talked about aging in place. That's obviously a big um, a thing that I, we all believe that uh, the um, that uh, not only Z-Wave, but the smart home has there's tremendous mm -hmm. potential there. But any thoughts on just kind of looking forward? Yeah, I mentioned uh, long range, Z-Wave long range. Uh, mm -hmm. This is uh, essentially the ability to send and receive signals at distances of what, perhaps one mile and, and longer. What that means that we can now put devices beyond the perimeter of the home, whether it's something like a rural mailbox that you'll know whether the mail has been brought in or driveway sensor or sensors in the pool out back, you know, um, being able to, to have uh, no limit 
on how you're going to be able to monitor your life and things around your life. I mean, this, this is really big for, for long range. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to see more and more devices coming out and talking about the ability to uh, deliver sensing uh, and data from outside of the home. That's a big deal. Do you have a time frame when you, when, if you had to put your thinking cap on, are we a year away from that, six months well, away good from news, that? From a Z-Wave perspective, actually, yeah. the uh, specification was released uh, September of last year. And actually, the very first certified Z-Wave long-range devices uh, are beginning to roll out now as we speak. So I would say certainly by year end or mid next year, you're going to have enough long range devices to be able to take advantage of it. Do, do you see this technology intersecting with um, uh, mesh routing capabilities in that, you know, the mesh router category is a very popular category within the connectivity right. space with homes. Do, how do you see that kind of dovetailing into, into mesh, which is really broadened the, the, the Wi-Fi wi footprint in the average home? Well, again, it's not just been Wi-Fi. And I think that's a great, that's a really good point because Z-Wave has been a mesh network from day one. And mm -hmm. simply put, all that means is that the more devices you put in the system, the stronger the, the system becomes because now devices can communicate through and to other devices. So if one outlet goes down, one light dimmer goes down, uh, the system doesn't just die. It finds another route. route. So I think it's important, and thanks for bringing it up, that Z-Wave Long Range is compatible with Z-Wave Mesh. It's all one and the right. same. And uh, it will definitely be compatible. It is actually very compatible. Um, in discussions about uh, Amazon and their their plan for sidewalk, uh, mm -hmm. to be able to, again, the sim same similar concept, what we're doing with Z-Wave is from the home to the device and for, to the device and back. And sidewalk is essentially enabled to bring in the entire neighborhood so that you can actually now communicate devices regardless of where your dog has run off to or your car is driving or what have you. Um, so sidewalk is going to be a pretty uh, important aspect of, of the future as well. No, and, and, I, and I agree with what Amazon was trying to accomplish with sidewalk. I think they rolled it out, you know, specific, specific to Amazon and probably less than a crisp, a crisp yeah. fashion because they had, you know, essentially for those people in the audience that didn't know what Amazon did, they kind of unrolled this, uh, they, you know, um, announced this feature and you had to opt out. You were already kind of opted in and there was a lot of the, there were a lot of the um, mm -hmm. tech journal community jumped up and says, oh, there's all kinds of right. privacy, which honestly, if you kind of dig deep, uh, Amazon's gone really the, the extra mile to really under, to really make sure that there was some, some solid um, privacy and protection features built into that uh, capability. But it's a, that's going to be enormously important. I think so. I think know? so. Amazon onto something, no doubt. So Mitch, I really appreciate being on the podcast. Any closing thoughts uh, you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, actually, if I can have two. Number one is keep doing what you're doing. If you're building a system or you're developing products for a system, keep doing it because the future is interoperable and you need not worry that you're going to build a product today that you're going to have to replace in a year or two or three years down the road. So keep doing what you're doing, I think, is number one. Uh, the second one is... The research that we were showing you uh, through this conversation is available to anyone and everyone. If you'd like to get the full details, there's a lot of really good information. It's like a 36 page report. It's a lot of good stuff in there. Just go to zwavealliance.org. You can see that down, uh, right down here, I think, <laughs> right? Go, go to our website and, you know, again, there's no charge. It's a free report. Just go in and download the report and let us know what oh, you that's think. that's great. Well, great, Mitch. Listen, thank you for taking the time to join me for today's podcast. For our viewing and listening audience, thanks for making the Smart Tech uh, Check podcast part of your day or commute. Please make sure that you hit the like and subscribe buttons at the end of today's podcast. And please don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Mark Vina Tech Guy. And until next time, have a great week. And thanks again, Mitch. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.